how do you feel about hip hop emulating the mafia? Because as a kid, you know, I was born in 73, right? When I heard the term gangster, it was talking about mafia guys. Of course. Right? And then in 1988, the song comes out by NWA called Gangster Gangster. I don't know if you remember the song. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. And I remember the first thing I thought was like, black guys calling themselves gangsters? That's that's different. I, I, I remember thinking at the time, I was in high school at the time, like, I've never heard this before. I've never heard of non-mafia guys referring to themselves as gangsters. I thought this was specifically an Italian mafia kind of thing. But NWA had a hit song called Gangster Gangster, which then led to gangster rap. And, and you just started to see this more and more often. You know, uh, 1992, Cool G Rap had a song called On the Run, where he was basically talking about working for the mafia. Uh, Ray Kwan uh, from Wu-Tang had a song called Wu Gambinos. Mm -hmm. And the album was actually supposed to be called Wu Gambinos. And I remember I did an interview with Steve Rifkin, who was the head of the label. His I dad, know you know who I'm talking Roy about. Roy Rifkin and Julie Rifkin. Right. I Roy Rifkin well. was a mafia-affiliated guy. And so was Julie. Julie was what? His, his brother. They had Spring Records, Julie and Roy Rifkin. Steve Rifkin was, was uh, uh, Julie Rifkin's son. I put Steve Rifkin to work on a movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Well- He made it big, by the way. Yeah. As you know. Yeah. As I, I, I mean, Vlad TV was under Loud, was under SRC Loud Records for a while. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It's all, it's all interconnected. Mm. Yeah. This is all, you and I have another, <laughs> another uh, degree of separation yeah. here that we just connected. Right. But basically what happened was they were supposed to call the album Boo Gambinos, which was under Loud Records. Mm -hmm. And then the Gambino family called Steve's dad and was like- you need to cut this shit out. <laughs> and they ended up, they, they named the song Woo Gambinos, but they didn't name the album Woo Gambinos because it was like, uh, or else. <laughs> and I remember I talked to Raekwon about this and he was like, yep, that's, that's pretty much what happened. Raekwon wanted to call the album, instead of only Built for Cuban Links, he wanted to call it Woo Gambinos. But then a phone call came in from the actual Gambinos. Tell me about this. My father called me. Somebody called him, and so they that they heard that, and they didn't want the name, you know, to keep that name out. Yeah, the Gambino Mafia, one of the five founders. I mean, so that was I don't know. Like, I stayed out of that, and I and I told Ray. Well, I guess Ray Ray says it in the book. Or yeah, Ray says it in the book. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically, you said like we're not, we can't use this name. And he's like, y'all want it. like we cannot use this name. What would have been the repercussions if you had used the name? I wasn't taking a chance. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, you know, they was like, yo, you can't call no albums that, you know. And um, this was a conversation that I had with Rifkin. Yeah, Steve Pops, he he was connected. He had a lot of relationships. So I remember. Me enforcing the title on Steve and saying, yo, this is what we want to call it. We want to call it Wu Gambinos. And he like, yo, I'm going to look into that. And I remember him coming back to me and saying, yo, it's not happening. I'm like, what you talking about? What do you mean it can't happen? Gambino men, what? We, what? He was like, it's not going to happen. I was like, you serious? He was like, yeah, it's not going to happen. You know, and he just told me like, yo, they not having that. And if they are having that, then you know what they having. <laughs> Once he said that, we ain't having it. So the name automatically was, it was um, it was dismissed. You know, and um, yeah. we started to think of what we wanted to call it. Well, j just so you know, Julie and Roy were with me and my dad. Really? Yes. Julie, Julie, back way back in uh, 1983, he he did the music for a movie that I produced, Knights of the City. Okay. And um, I, I'm sorry, yeah, Knights of the, no, not Knights of the City, was it? Yeah, Knights of the City, did a couple of them. Uh, but he had said to me, can you put my son Steven to work? And I said, Julie, you're going to a big record label. You want me to put your son to work? Of course. And I put him to work on, on our film. And uh, as a matter of fact, if you speak to him, he'll tell you, he was, uh, he was going after my, who's now my wife, you know, he was trying to make her his girlfriend back then. She's not my wife of 38 years, but uh, he's a good kid, Stevie. He, he really was. I liked him a lot. 
And he's good friends now with Tommy Matola from, uh, you know Tommy, right? Yeah, from Sony Records. Sony Music, yeah. He's a good friend of mine. It, it goes on and on, though, in terms of the mafia influences. I mean, uh, Master P had a album called The Last Dawn. Well, listen, uh, it, you know, when you think of gangster, I mean, we weren't the only gangster. Remember, the Irish were big back then, too. But sure. when you think of gangster, who is the most romanticized, played out? It's always the mafia. Mm -hmm. I mean, for some reason, you know, Hollywood took to that. I mean, you know, we have very colorful figures in our life, you know, between Al Capone and, and all the rest or, or leading right up to John Gotti. I mean, you know, it is what it is. So why wouldn't you copy the best? Yeah. <laughs> if you want to be known as a gangster, a mafia. Listen, I don't care where you go all over the world. It's all about mafia. I mean, I've been to Singapore. <laughs> you got to know the questions that they ask me about, you know, mafia stuff that I'm saying, how do they know this on this side of the world? Everybody's into it.